Hey guys, it's Jeremy on the One Wild Crafter channel. This is a show us your steak challenge. We've got some venison chops here. Um, it is also basically a catch and cook venison. So a little bit of a deer hunt that I uh, had last week. Uh, also, I'm gonna show you how to um, butcher your quarters of deer at home. And I'm gonna talk about the show us your steak challenge. I've got a couple people, a few people that I want to uh, tag on this challenge and I'm going to mention them all at the end and the reasons why uh, I've gone outside of the YouTube platform. Stay tuned! Hey guys, One Wild Crafter here and it is Black Friday. So hang in there, follow with me as I take you on a tour of all my favorite shops uh, for some great Black Friday deals. <laughs> yeah, right. Black Friday and uh, I am not in any shops I'm deer hunting and I'm also producing this video as a show me your steak challenge um, first thing I want to do is go find some steaks on the hoof so follow along on that part of the adventure I've got a couple of backup steaks in case we're not successful but uh, we're feeling pretty good about this hunt and uh, I think it's gonna pan out well for us and I'm joined uh, by my friend Nick so Nick you might have seen um, on the Wooded Beardsman's channel, we did some ice fishing on Manitoulin Island, uh, which is where I am, if I didn't already say that. And I'm hooking up with Nick, and we're going to share some steaks over a fire uh, in support of ending the stigma on men's mental health. Um, that challenge originated with Hayes Outdoors, and he uh, does a much better job of articulating the goals of the challenge, and I'm going to link his channel below. If you don't watch the rest of this video, you should at least go to his channel, watch his Show Us Your Steak Challenge, um, check out his links, and you'll see that lots of other YouTube bushcrafters have been tagged in this challenge, uh, and I encourage you to, to support the cause. So one of the guys shot at a deer here. We are coming back to uh, track it, but on the way, we saw four does and a buck off of the road, so I'm gonna sneak in on this farm property here. Let's see about getting a steak. That's not a hard trail to follow. You can flip her over. So we're cleaning the dough right here and uh, a fawn popped up right on the trail behind us and I admit that I missed twice. It wasn't even that far away and I know when Delphine and I were practicing with this rifle we we're having some issues with it. It seemed to be shooting a lot low and we made huge adjustments on the scope and then we were hitting pumpkins at 90, 98 meters we were or 95 meters uh, which seemed pretty good for deer hunting. Uh, but it's would not hit a pumpkin right now. I don't know what's going on. So I might retire that one for the rest of this hunt I might use just the other one, which is the uh, shotgun with the 4570 insert So this is approximately half of that one deer that our camp got for the rifle hunt So I'm gonna butcher this up. There's the front shoulder behind quarter and some tenderloin in there, not tenderloin, backstrap loin, um, from which I will cut a couple of steaks for the show us your steak. It is always worth taking the time to do your deer properly. It makes a huge difference in your finished product. And a couple of things that you want to watch for are uh, dirt, which you can usually pick off better than like people will hose their deer down. It's not really effective because if you've got a little bad spot, it just spreads spreads the bacteria around on your deer. You don't want to do that. You should pick off all the hairs because nobody likes to find a hair in their food. And another important thing is to trim fat. Deer fat has a very, very high... Um, melting point which means even when you cook your food really hot the fat still wants to immediately 
congeal in your mouth because it's a really unple unpleasant <clears throat> taste or texture or feeling. Um, so there's a couple things going on. One, the fat doesn't taste good. Two, it doesn't feel good. Um, so anywhere that you see this fat, um, even this like stringy fat, I have yet to find a good use for that. If you know a good use for it, other than feeding the birds, I would be very interested to know. I rendered some one time, but it still was very uninteresting. Um, and so you should spend more time trimming fat probably than you end up spending actually cutting and wrapping meat. And it's really boring. It doesn't make a good YouTube video, so I'm not going to show all that. But just imagine that I'm carefully going along and removing as much of that fat as I can. Um, it might feel like something you don't have the patience for the first time you do it, especially if you aren't uh, you're used to doing a deer a lot faster. You'll really notice yourself slowing down when you remove fat. Um, but just give it a chance and try, try the finished product and then you'll see that it is definitely worthwhile. You also, if you get it at the right spot, you can often remove the fat easier by finding the connective layer between the fat and the meat. That's much easier to do with your nimble primate fingers than it is to do with a knife. Because as soon as you get the knife in there, you start to cut through those layers and your cut's gonna go off on a different different angle. Um, but if you get in there with your thumb or your fingers, you can pretty easily find where the fat's attached and just peel most of that off. Most of the fat that you wanna get rid of, you can just do with your fingers Maybe get a fingernail in there sometimes. And then just use a knife in the tricky spots. Okay. So... If you watched my bear butchering video, you saw me do that mostly as roasts, and I've decided that I'm going to do most of this deer as roasts also. And the reason for that is um, it's less wrapping, it's less work initially, and if I change my mind later, I can always come back and cut a roast down into steaks, uh, or I can cut it down into stew chunks, or if I want, I can even put it through the grinder and grind down. So here, this is a hind quarter of a deer. This is like the knee. You can see the hip socket inside here. And the first roast I'm cutting off is the sirloin roast. So from the knee, I'm basically taking out, and you can see the line of the muscle. I'm taking out this muscle, and that's going to be one roast. So I find the knee, I just go up a little bit from the knee, cut straight down. Now there's a bone lying in here, along here, obviously, which goes to this hip bone. You could probably draw the line of it, and you'll notice even on the back side of the beat, there is a line where the muscles separate. So <clears throat> I'm going to go down until I hit that bone. And then I'm going to follow the bone, keeping my knife so it's just sliding against the bone. And you'll notice that it wants to follow that line. So I keep the handle in line with this muscle, I keep the blade touching the bone, follow it right till you hit the ball of the hip. That's what's stopping the knife now. And then you can just angle your knife up and take off the end. So that's a sirloin roast and you can see here this is where I made my cut in. I followed the bone until I hit the hip socket. See the hip socket there? So the knife stopped and then I just cut up. OK, 
Okay, so that's my first roast. I'm gonna trim some of this fat off of it, pick the hair off, and I'm just gonna wrap that. You know, later if I open this up, I don't want to roast, all I have to do, cut it into steaks, right? Or I can cube it all up into stew chunk, or I can just run the whole thing through the grinder and have nice ground venison. So that's the first roast. There's a little fatty triangle here on the edge of the meat. I cut that out. And this one too. We don't need that fat in there. Some of it's hiding right between these two muscles. All right, wrapping 101. Get your wrapping paper. It's wax on one side, it's just plain paper on the other. Start in a corner. And as you work in a line towards the other corner, you're gonna fold your edges in. Okay, you want everything nice and tight so only the wax paper is making contact with your meat and there are no hair pockets. Get that over. <clears throat> when you get to your the end of your triangle, you can fold it under and then it's going to leave a nice square edge on your package. And I wasn't quite prepared for this shot, but I'm going to get my whoo, ripped my bag here. My bag of collected elastics. You save them up through the year, use them all in the hunting season. And I'm just going to elastic that. And I'm going to get a Sharpie marker. Another tip. Guys, always, always label your meat when you put it in the freezer. Maybe you're going to think that you'll know what it is after, but um, you might not. Sometimes I'll even um, add some, some extra details. So island dough and maybe even the date. This is a sirloin roast. Because maybe I'll have more than one deer or more than one venison in my freezer and they might taste different or have different qualities and maybe I want to cook one for a special occasion and I want to get the right one. So good labels, very important. All right, next cut. So the sirloin roast came off the top. Everything from the hip bone to the knee bone and on the other side of the bone is a round steak if you cut them into steaks or it's a round roast if you leave it as is and I think what I'm going to do so there's the least amount of waste is I'm going to find the joint in the knee here I'm going to take the bone apart at the joint I'm going to cut a straight line down and I'm going to trim this extra meat off the end and I'm going to wrap this whole big piece as one bone-in round roast that's what that is so let's let's figure ourselves out here knee joints are are really tricky um, I don't know if I have good advice to give you while I do this on camera except to say that what you want to do is find the joint where the bones attach together and without wrecking your knife you want to work around in that joint in such a way that it comes apart and for some joints that's really easy and for some joints like the knee joint it's really really difficult So you might know this about your own joints, but they're usually encased in a, some kind of a fascia or a, maybe it's called a meniscus. It's pretty tough material. You want to cut through that so that you expose your joint. And you want to get in there. Somewhere inside of your joint there's going to be a tendon or a ligament. 
that's joining your muscle groups to that bone for the movement. You want to sever those. And it's good if you move the joint a bit while you're working on it, then you'll expose different parts of it. This one's going pretty well so far, actually. I'm using a fillet knife. You probably noticed that already. Um, I don't have a lot of fancy butchering knives. I'm quite fond of butchering deer with a fillet knife. I find that they are uh, long, so they let you do these big meat cuts, right? So that's one end of my round roast, and I'll cut this off and get my other end. So fillet knives really excel at that. The other thing that's handy is they have these nimble um, knife tips. And those, if you're not using a saw and you're working around inside of the joints, it's very, very dexterous. And so you can get into those narrow places and cut stuff. So this is a shank. Uh, I was just talking about braised shanks with uh, my friend Nick. And so I think I'll probably wrap this lower leg up and just call it venison shank bone in and do a braised shank recipe in the big wild year. I just have to trim some uh, fat and pick some of this hair off. This is my round roast bone in and <clears throat> I'm going to just square it off at the end, first I have to find out what the shape of this bone joint is at the end. I'm going to work around that. I think it's shaped like a T. And cut the end of the roast off square. And this here, I could wrap it up and call it a hip roast. You can see that it's all mostly one big intact piece of meat. And that would work out just fine as a roast, especially if I wanted to get fancy and tie it to hold it all together. Um, or I might later on decide that it'll be better as ground or as stew. But I can do that later when I'm ready to eat it. I don't have to do all that work now. I can just put it in as a roast. Here's the, uh, here's the other end of that hip bone. Sorry about the shadows in this shot guys, it's uh, I don't have good lighting in my kitchen. Okay, so there's the hip end, the knee end, I took off the sirloin roast and everything around here, that's all one big hefty round roast. You can see that there's a little bit of spoilage happened here. Um, not really spoilage but discoloration from um, some of the stomach and liver contents. So I'm going to trim, trim up those black spots. And this roast is ready to wrap. Okay, now it's time for the front shoulder. So there's the front knee part. Here's the shoulder. The blade is inside of there. You can see the edge of it here so it's cartilaginous at the edge you can cut it and then it becomes bonier as you get closer to the joint um, this front shoulder has some a big flap of the breast meat still attached to it so the first thing I'm going to do is trim that off it's not quite the first thing I did though the first thing I did is I took hair off of this and trimmed most of the fat there's some fat here that was under that flap of breast meat. Okay, so that comes off. There's a little flap here on the other side. Just take that off like so. Oh, I found lots of hair on this side too, so I'm gonna have to take a few more minutes and tidy this up. And 
I'm going to cube up all of this flappy meat that's going to go into stew chunks. Uh, or you could grind it. And then we will tackle the rest of this leg. So everything's trimmed up and I cut up all those little extra flaps just to get them out of the way so they've gone into the stewing meat pile. Now with this shoulder what I want to do is I want to take it apart at this joint and then I want to take it apart at this joint. So I'm going to start up here by this knee bone. Just cut behind it. So this is going to be um, like a shank again for brazing later. And I want to do the same thing by finding out where where this guy's attached. And just cut through any any little bits of tendon or silver skin that's holding that together. There's a piece of fat and a piece of stew. of it and just cut through all the all the tendons and ligaments there. I think this one's trickier than the back leg just the way it uh, fits together. Got this flipped over. Find the edge of it. There's a big tendon right there. Slice that guy up. It's a really good idea to keep moving the joint so you can see what's what's holding it from letting go. Probably won't be able to see this all that great. I don't know if you want me to just keep talking about it or just trust that eventually by finding all the right little spots and cutting all the right pieces there it is you can get that joint to separate without using a saw and without wrecking your knife so way cool little puzzle piece the way these two fit together So this is another shank basically, um, trim it up a little bit, clean it up, wrap it, <clears throat> and then we've got this shoulder blade. So again, I think I want to disconnect it at this joint here, 
So the blade is up here. There's a joint right there on this little short bone. And you can see there's quite a bit of tendon right here. So I'm going to start by cutting through that. around this joint. See, I've got it separated now. Get around that joint. So, put the knife through. There, so I've got a bone-in roast here as well. I actually don't remember what this piece is called. It's not the shoulder, but it's below the shoulder. If I think of it, I'll pop up a little text box that says something clever about it. Um, and then I'm left with just this. So the shoulder blade, it's kind of got a relatively squarish shape to it. Um, it's got some of the best flavored meat on the deer. It's got a lot of this... Uh, stubborn fat so I'm gonna take a minute to trim some of this off and then I'm just gonna wrap this whole blade as its own roast so that's that you've basically taken your main quarters a hind quarter and a front quarter you just do this all again another time to do the other side of the deer and you've got it broken down into roast if you prefer steak, then you just cut your roasts into slices. If you like your steak with the bone on, then you have to have some kind of a meat saw or a bone saw to cut through this. Maybe a nice blade on your band saw. Um, and you're all set. Alright, last but not least, here is a piece of the back strap and um, a piece of, oops, that's a tendon, and a piece of neck meat. So what I'm going to do now is um, cube up this neck meat into my stew container and with the tenderloin what I want to do is what do I want to do with this I want to square off an end and make some stew chunks and I want to cut some venison chops just little chops for show me your steak just enough for a frying pan load so those will be show me your steak chops and then I think what I want to do with this is cut it in half and I'm just going to wrap it as uh, two loin roasts basically. That's all it takes. Um, you know I imagine most guys who deer hunt they read the hunting reviews, they find out which bullets are best, they agonize over what kind of a gun to buy, they look at all the different clothing options and the scent blocker and the fancy boots. Um, and this is just your next logical step in your skilling up. So it is very difficult some years to hunt and get and harvest a deer um, it is not so difficult to learn how to butcher one. So if you can catch a deer, <laughs> not catch one, but harvest one, I'd like to see you just catch one. Uh, if you can harvest a deer, you can butcher a deer. And I challenge you to butcher your own.
We're at the Sappy Shack. Our little sappy place has not caved under the snow yet, so that's good. There's an old bed frame here we found that we're using as a, a bench. And we're gonna shovel out this fire pit and uh, get a fire going. No, I made, made it with my hand. See, there was a lot of snow in it. You worked really hard. Snow in it. I didn't! <laughs> <It was> passive. <laughs> okay, can you guys help to lay some branches down? And then we'll put paper on top, and then we'll put more branches. Okay. And we're gonna fire it up. Little ones first. Oh! Oh, come on. Got my helpers here with me today. We're gonna get this fire started. They're cooking hot dogs. I'm cooking venison. It's a winter fire, so we want lots of firewood ready, lots of sticks. Who's gonna light it? Me! The littlest one? Yeah! Alright, you wanna get the matches? Yeah, where are they? They're just in the sled. In the cooler or just in the just, sled? They should just be beside the camera case. over close. I want to match it. I mean light it. Yep, sure. Come on over too. First you have to make you have to make a little path to your paper right so you can reach in. There's a little path for you. So there. if you each. There's a match. What if it lights my mittens on fire? I don't think it will. Will it light my fingers? Not if you hold the end. Okay. And it won't light them. It'll I've always burn been them. scared that it'll burn. Okay, and then strike, and then hold it on the paper, right? Just like that. Yep. I'm just gonna get close. Yep. Get close so they're pushing bit. it all over. You're gonna strike on that side. Good. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. Don't strike it right into your other hand. Wet. It's a little bit wet, but it's gonna go. There it is. Mm. Good. Good. The monkey on this side. Oh, don't put it too close to the paper or the flame goes out. Here, you just get a second try, that's all. Push a little bit harder. Right in there. Sometimes yeah. you can push it along that way. There you go. <gasps> oh. You can hold it. But. Good. And then touch it to the, just under your paper, where you made your little path. Good. There you go. Oh, you can usually just throw the match on the fire after me. Good push. Well, you already got your paper lit, so you're good. Um, but could I try again? Yeah, I don't. Oh, hold it yeah. farther away. Here, I'll hold the matches for you. Remember to leave a little bit of air Can around. Can we put another light. little piece of paper under on the top and do it? No, nope, we're just gonna throw your match right in there. Ooh. Good. Well, now these can go back in their waterproof now. case. Okay, back under the shelter. Where so are we my all... meat tins over in here? Your brother will show you where. Oh, my fire's burning out. Well, let's just see if it goes. Oh, no. So this is a show us your steak challenge. And if you're not familiar with this challenge, but I'm sure you are. Um, I was nominated by um, Adam. And Adam, I'll mess up your last name. So I'm just going to write it at the bottom of the screen. I was nominated by Adam recently and also by... Chris on the Wooded Beardsman channel and uh, this challenge was begun by Hayes Outdoors over in the UK to bring awareness to men's mental health which is uh, a pretty serious topic and as he points out one that we don't often talk about um, and and I think he did a better job talking about it than I would so you know I really encourage you to go to his video, I'm gonna link it, or I'm gonna put a channel link at the end of this video, because uh, I really think you should go back and see him as the originator. 
And if you haven't already watched uh, Adam's video, the Wooded Beardsman's video, and a host of others in the um, bushcrafting community, then I uh, highly recommend that you go and do that. I think <clears throat> earlier I mentioned I was going to cook a steak with my friend Nick and uh, that didn't pan out just because of the way our hunting season ran. Oh, I'm getting winded. I have a sinus infection right now. Um, but uh, we were going to cook a steak and I think Nick and I are both uh, no strangers to uh, a little sense of anguish sometimes and uh, the shame of letting your hunting friends down. Um, so I want to make a pact with Nick. I don't think he knows that I'm doing this yet. I'm going to send him a link. Nick, every year we have to reach out to each other before the draw deadline for doe tags. This is important stuff. It doesn't seem like a big deal when you miss the draw at the time, but then when you're out there with your friends and you've all got buck tags and all you see are does and you just want fresh venison, it hurts. You let somebody down, yourself and your friends. So that's gonna be our new pact. I'm a little bit joking, but a little bit not deer hunting serious stuff um, and for sure it's one of the ways that uh, that I feel like I connect with my uh, traditions and manliness and spending time outdoors is super super important um, for people spiritually and emotionally psychologically and so it's really good for you to have an outdoor space at all this space I take it for granted I grew up on a huge property that my parents own and I had all the outdoors I ever wanted um, then I spent some time living in cities and you later on get to appreciate what you're missing but uh, for people who've always lived in a city you don't even know what you're missing maybe and it's uh, it's really important to get out and access nature in whatever form it's available to you um, you know and, and and you can always go back to those memories so even when you can't access that space at least you've got that experience and that memory inside of you that you can go to that's really important anyway this uh, <clears throat> this challenge has been super successful in the bushcrafter community uh, on YouTube and I'm already a week behind on putting this video out and I think that I don't know if there's anybody left to tag and uh, seeing as how it's got a social media origin and uh, it's an important topic I want to uh, I want to tag some people on Facebook so I've got some friends who I think uh, have three things going for them number one they like to go outside and uh, they will and number two I'm, I'm pretty confident that they know how to cook a good steak and they're going to share some good steak tips and number three I think that they uh, would also agree that speaking about men's mental health is uh, very important um, so I've got those people that I want to mention uh, I had a list and I forgot to bring it with me um, so I might cut and splice a little bit here um, because I did reach out to people in advance so um, you might not see this movement go past my channel uh, necessarily I am going to nominate one YouTuber I haven't reached out to him yet so this will be a surprise for him um, but I'm hoping that it moves on to Facebook and uh, travels around there a little bit too maybe over to Instagram and so on so uh, first up Mike Stevens Mike Stevens is a friend who lives in the city uh, he's been a great social organizer uh, in uh, in a circle of friends getting those guys outside cooking really good meals and uh, having man adventures out in the wilderness um, lots of camping trips he does yearly ones four or five a year and uh, Mike, I, I nominate you to do a video uh, on Facebook and to tag three people 
um, for the show us your steak challenge and I just want to say I really appreciate all the organizing you do to uh, get us out having adventures <clears throat> okay my next one um, stitch magic man stitch Manitowabi stitch I want to nominate you I reached out to you you said uh, you said you would be up for this you don't use YouTube I don't think but uh, you're very active on Facebook and a lot of people um, listen to you and respect the lifestyle that you're living and the lessons that you bring to people about uh, about the outdoors and traditions so I challenge you to make a show us your steak video and uh, post that post that to Facebook hashtag be like stitch love that hashtag I also want to uh, nominate my friend Caleb. Caleb Musgrave. Caleb has an outdoors uh, bushcraft business and Caleb has introduced a lot of people to outdoor skills. Um, not only that, but uh, he's an excellent, excellent speaker, storyteller, sharp memory, sharp wit. Um, and a lot of people admire you Caleb and appreciate the stories and the wisdom and the humor that you bring to your Facebook page um, and I would like to challenge you to cook a steak and bring awareness to men's mental health um, on Facebook okay a youtuber <clears throat> I think we all know that uh, generally we don't get enough exercise, but we know that physical wellness is very tightly linked to mental wellness. And even if you can't access the outdoors, at least, at least you can keep fit and get your exercise. And I have definitely been working hard off and on. Um, at maintaining my fitness and improving my mobility and one youtuber that uh, I really really appreciated I got onto his channel when it was relatively small and it has grown a lot I would say in the last one year or two years um, and that's Tom Merrick uh, bodyweight warrior so Tom I challenge you I didn't reach out to you in advance so sorry if I catch you off guard but I challenge you to go outside eat a steak cook a steak eat a steak in that order don't eat it first and cook it second cook a steak eat a steak and talk about men's mental health and uh, especially in the context of physical wellness mobility strength flexibility activity those are all really, really important things. Uh, so I'd appreciate uh, if you could do that. Uh, I'm going to send a message to Tom. I'm going to put a link to his channel here. If you guys can help me out, start dropping a couple of uh, comments on his videos. Link him back to this, this video. Tell him he's been tagged. And uh, I hope that he picks up the challenge. Oh, no! All four hot dogs I was in monologuing and the fire went out, so we have to rebuild the fire so I can cook my steaks. Okay, got a little bit of work to do. We're on a little bit of a time crunch here. So, I'm not going to wait for this to go right down to coals, but I'm going to basically broil these on the flame. So this video you saw that we harvested this deer uh, last weekend. Last weekend, this is fresh venison, never been frozen. I uh, hope you enjoyed all my tips on how to butcher. Um, I do my own butchering always, and I think you get a better product. I don't have anything against butchers, but with the um, venison, you have to be very careful about peeling all the fat, and I think that um, most people don't take the time. And it's also, 
if you're going to learn all about the guns and the bullets and the blinds and the tree stands, like, learn about the butchering too. So with these guys here, I added some maple syrup. I added some soy sauce. So they've got their sugars, they've got their salts. They've basically marinated in that juice for uh, six days in the fridge. Should be good and tender. I have this little uh, campfire grill that I find pretty helpful. Uh, I use it for cooking fish. I use it for cooking um, steaks. I roast chestnuts on the open fire with this. Here, let's uh, let's do a thumbnail shot here. Maybe that'll be the cover shot. So here we go, fresh venison. Get our stick back down here. We want to get that paper out of the way. There we go, we'll let it cook. Flame broiled. So, uh, if you have not seen my video yet, I think actually I haven't shown a video yet of this spot. Um, Delphine and I have been up here clearing out a spot. We set up uh, that tarp uh, shelter that you saw in an earlier clip and we're getting ready for maple syrup production this spring. Uh, so uh, maple syrup is going to be our only sweetener in the big wild year. So our yeah. big wild year is a, a full year of eating only wild foods, no garden foods, um, basically all foods that we've collected ourselves. Um, you've probably seen some of my earlier videos where we've been stockpiling some bear meat, uh, road killed venison, and now a rifle season venison. Um, we have uh, lots of other foods, plant foods, animal foods. We're going to do an update. We're probably going to do a live broadcast. So I'll just throw that out there right now. Uh, we'll probably do a live broadcast uh, in the new year. Oh, getting in the frame, monkey. Um, about what we've got prepared to take us through the new year uh, until we get into some new wild foods in the spring. So stay tuned for that update if you're interested in our wild food year. Uh, the best way to get information about that is to subscribe to my channel and also to Delphine's Instagram account at Delphine Collier on Instagram where we will be posting frequent updates, uh, wild food recipes, um, some uh, physical measurements that we're taking, uh, body composition, we're doing blood tests, uh, ketosis testing and all that kind of stuff. So you might be interested in that information, uh, eating only wild food. And, uh, you know, that's part of what, what keeps us uh, happy and healthy is uh, the time spent outdoors. Try and uh, get the kids out sometimes for that kind of stuff. Uh, my kids were just here eating some dirty hot dogs. Does that make me a good daddy or a bad daddy? Good daddy. I let, a good daddy that I let you eat hot dogs and I'm eating fresh marinated venison steaks? Good daddy. Good daddy? I would say so too. Oh, good daddy's got lots of smoke in his eyes. Uh-oh, good daddy. There's those. We'll, we'll bring these cooked steaks over for the camera to see. Look, do you think everybody's hungry? Yeah. Little venison uh -huh. loin chops. Uh -huh. Don't burn yourself. Ouch. Look at those. So, there's, there's my chat. Uh, my time outdoors in my sappy place. The happy place. Happy place! That's what we call this spot. Um, happy sappy poppy slap. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think these are even cooked right through? Let's, let's have a look. Oh, they're so tender. They're so not cooked in the middle yet. <laughs> that is so good. Do a bite? Yeah. There you go. Use your finger.
That is delicious. Try not to cook your venison. Uh, try not to overcook it. That's really good. Can you taste the maple syrup? Yeah. Yeah. Mixed reaction over here. But I like it. It looks disgusting. So that's a wrap. Um, please support the uh, Schweizer Steak Challenge by checking out other people's videos on YouTube. Um, you can see that lots of people are posting links. If you are feeling like you're in a mental health challenge, for sure reach out and talk to somebody. Access those support networks. And if you're being proactive about your mental health, get outside as much as you can, stay active, spend time with friends, spend time with your stinking kids, even if they're smelly and irritating and no! horrible, and all they want to eat is hot dogs, take them out anyway, because they'll remember it. <laughs> they might not remember it as it actually was, but they'll remember it fondly no matter what happens, I think.